Hello everybody. We are here with Past Quirks with professional actor Troy Chessman. Hello Troy. Hello Tommy. Lovely to meet you at last. Thank you for having me. I'd just like to ask a few questions, if I may. Absolutely, I'm ready. So what was it then that made you want to originally be an actor then? I've always known that I've wanted to be an actor. I think as a child, I used to find escapism in, in music, in TV, in film, in the stage. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't fortunate enough to always be able to go to the theatre, but when I did it made this sort of everlasting impression on me. I would always feel inspired and I had so much energy as a child and I just wanted to, to, to release it in a way that, that felt right for me. You know, and I, I used to dance. As a child, I went to dance school, so I loved doing that and it then sort of manifested into, into performing um, on stage, doing sort of serious stuff. I always felt inspired to, to perform however way I could. And especially as a child, I used to be able to sing as well. So I used to sing quite a lot. I used to dance quite a lot. I think my parents saw that and they put me into dance school, which was great. Yeah, and I, I continued with it. But I knew that nothing compared, no, no job, no other activity compared to the feeling that I got from, from doing theatre. It wasn't just something I loved, but it also became sort of like a... Like I said, an escapism. It became my, my sort of lifeline. It became my um, my coping strategy. Oh, that's interesting. So, did you have a favourite actor, author, playwright when you were growing up? And if if so, sort of who was it then? How did that kind of influence your decision to obviously want to get into all of this? Looking back, I would say there was never any one particular performer that inspired me. I was I was inspired by anybody that was that was lucky enough that was able to to bring me that performance if it be dancer like, I wouldn't know their names as a child I would never know their names but I would be so I would be so dumbfounded and just overwhelmed by by people's performances um like the songs I would listen to the music the way it made me feel that's kind of that's kind of what inspired me but as I grew up you know and as I started training and whatnot I did start to develop favorites a lot of my favorite um, playwrights See, apart from the Bard, obviously, um, I have to say that. Joe Wharton, I'm a huge fan of his work. I love, I've performed in a couple of his plays now. I love the work of Mark Ravenhill, quite controversial, but offered quite some, offered some good parts when I was a, a teenager, especially um, during my training. Um, Jonathan Harvey wrote A Beautiful Thing, which was one of the first plays that I really that really sort of captured my heart I've never been able to do it I did a, a duologue from it in training but I've never been able to 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 actually do the whole production so that would be my dream um, but as far as actors go no I think I think you're only as strong as your last performance and there are some actors who really insp who I think are really amazing in a particular role but then they might do something a bit like oh <laughs> interesting so yeah, I think for me it's all about, it's about the performance, like every individual performance. But yeah, I'm inspired by anybody that that works hard and really, you can really see it, you know, or you can hear it. That's a good point actually, because thinking about it, one of my favourite actors, it, you know, it's not everyone's favourite, but Leonardo DiCaprio, simply from the fact, particularly as he's got older, the film choices he's made have been absolutely incredible and. You know, just to be able to see him kind of grow as an actor on screen, you know, as you're getting bigger as well. I mean, a favourite film of mine in particular is Man in the Iron Mask. Fantastic film if you've got the chance to see it. And he's literally plays, you know, twin brothers in it. And they're so, so different from each other. And then, obviously, much later on, you've got things he's in, such as The Revenant and Wolf of Wall Street, and, you know, he's just a completely different guy, and even in Django Unchained, you know, playing a villain, absolutely fantastic. So to someone who'd never sort of, you know, thought about acting or writing before, do you have any advice for them if they'd want to get into it? How would you describe the sort of work that you do? I think you have to be relentless. You have to, you have to never 
give up. And the, the, the reality is, you know, there are a lot of hardships involved, rejection, um, you know, there's not a lot of jobs always around. But my sort of work ethos is to is to give whatever I'm doing 100%, no matter what it is. If it's a tiny little project that's one show or if it's a six-week run of something, you know, I tack it with the same amount of energy, enthusiasm, and passion. And yeah, and luckily I, I keep getting work, which is, which is great. Um, but I would say for anyone that's starting, just don't give up. And I think you, ha- you like, don't ever get complacent. I think there's always things to learn and... I'm one of these people where I'm constantly looking for the next challenge and I accept the next challenge and I will accept my failures and I will work on them and I will take them and I will use them to make myself better. And But I would say, yeah, be, be relentless and don't be afraid to put yourself out there, you know? Especially when you're starting off, take, take little film projects. Like, if they may not be able to pay you, but, you know, it, it's good experience being in front of a camera. Yes, and I, I'd say... Don't be afraid to to connect, you know, put your name out there. Email agents, email casting directors, email anybody, everybody that's going to listen and just say, this is me, this is who I am, and come see my shows. Come see my shows and support other people's shows. I think a lot of my inspiration when I'm building characters comes from other people, you know, shows that I've seen years ago, performances that are, like, sort of noticeable, that leave this impression with me and I go oh my god I could so use that or that tiny little thing this person did this character did just left something it left a a, a mark something that I can draw on in the future yeah because thinking about it not everyone has that initial impetus to actually go out there and just put themselves out there no that makes sense actually so do you have any story then and inspiration behind any particular project that you know holds a special place in your heart for instance I've read here that you know, you've directed, for instance, Shakespeare at the Globe. I mean, that must have been absolutely amazing. I have. I think every project that I do has some importance or value to me. A lot of the shows that I do usually start off with some sort of theme or some sort of issue that I like to address. It could be anything. You know, I like to look at things like sexuality, mental health. A lot of the writing that I do does does focus on mental health because I think it's such a, an important thing that is often, I feel, misrepresented at times as well. The same with um, things like sexuality is another important thing that I like to talk about. You know, I like to find new ways of exploring these, these subjects. Um, so recently, um, it's not something I directed, but I, my, one of my last jobs, I was playing Romeo in an all-male um, LGBTQ plus version of Romeo and Juliet. And we found so much, so much new things in it, like because it was two men, both Romeo and Juliet were both male. And hearing Juliet's lines being said by a man, you see things and you notice things. And that's a lot of feedback we got, people saying, actually, I heard that line for the first time and I think that's really important. It's about how we can find new ways of conveying these messages. A lot of the projects that I have come from something that inspires me or makes me go, hey, I need to, talk, I need to speak about this. I need to talk about that. I need to address that or that's not right. I'm going to challenge that. So that's usually how I work. That's my um, my process. Well, that is interesting because a lot of the time it tends to be a language barrier with people not liking Shakespeare, doesn't it? People don't understand it. And, you know, finding obviously new meanings and bringing things to sort of a modern context can actually be quite helpful in that sense. So have you met any other famous actors then? Any famous historians, authors, anything like that? Any heroes that are, you know, any memorable sort of experiences there? In all honesty, no. Um, I mean, I've met I've met a couple of my favourite writers and stuff like that, like in events and things. But I mean, I've never been able to work with them. But actually, I'm okay with that because a lot of the artists that I do work with, who are sort of up and coming, are so passionate and are, are full of such amazing ideas that actually I I'm happy with that because I'm working I'm working with people who know their stuff who want to learn who are exploring you know the the industry and 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 i i love that so no i haven't sadly but of all the people i have met i did meet stephen burkoff once which was quite nice and actually he wasn't as bad as as i as i was expecting you know he's quite notorious to some people but actually he was rather pleasant <laughs> but no but i will let you know if i ever do please do i look forward to hearing it 
So obviously backtracking slightly to Shakespeare then, you mentioned before about doing sort of Romeo and Juliet, which obviously is a historic play. In terms of history, are there any eras that you'd want to go back to and, you know, if so, why? I would love to go back to um, Elizabethan England. I think that would be an amazing time to be alive. I mean, I wouldn't want to be sort of alive during the plague or anything. That wouldn't be fun. But I would love to go and see one of Shakespeare's plays actually performed at the Globe, you know, with him alive. <laughs> I think that would be incredible, yeah. I think, or I would love to go back to a sort of a time, I'd love to go back to maybe the 1930s or 1920s, sort of pre-war. I think it was quite a, a classy era, I think would be nice. It would be nice to to explore that that sort of the world then. But yeah, I know the Elizabethan Elizabethan England would be my would be my top. So if you could spend a day with anyone from history, who would it be and why? Interesting. So uh, somebody from history that's always intrigued me. Um and you'll probably know you I should probably speak to you about him because you probably you probably might know more about him than I do. But George Boleyn, to so Anne Boleyn's brother He's such a notorious sort of character, like in the media he's portrayed a certain way, but actually there's not really no, much known about him. And I, I, I realise this because I, I wanted to develop a one-man show about George Berlin. And I was trying to do as much research as I could and I realised actually there was nothing out there. Because obviously when he was arrested and tried, like everything that was associated with him was destroyed and ruined. So there's not much documentation that explains who he is. He's done a lot of... A lot of the sort of characters been built from very sort of passive evidence, you know. If some, this person said this, well, this person wrote this about him. So yeah, I would love to. I'd love to. I'd love to have um, a nice beer with him and just ask him loads of questions <laughs> and build a build a uh, an accurate character. Um, and, and you know, maybe Anne can come as well. I think that could be fun. I don't, I've got plenty of questions for her too. <laughs> Even now, given all the coverage. That they get you, just still popular one among lost people, isn't it? So, having done Edinburgh Fringe and things like that, you've obviously travelled quite a way acting. Do you have a favourite historic location in the UK, and and if so, why? I mean, it doesn't even have to be a particular historic location. Any location really that you know has really caught your eye, and you know you'd recommend for other people. Yes, well, Edinburgh is rich in history and. If you do ever get a chance to go to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival or just to Edinburgh, like, it's stunning, it's beautiful, and it's got so much history. So I think, yes, that will always be a, a good place, and, and I hope I get to go back as many times as possible. But I think for me personally, I, one of the best performances that I've been a part of, which was a sort of associated to a historical site, I was in Southampton for quite a long time, and there's a, a hospital, an old hospital, Netley Hospital, it used to be a hospital during the First World War and the Second World War. It was bombed and demolished, but the chapel still remains. So it's been sort of renovated and still kept there. I got to do a performance there of a World War I play, which was absolutely amazing. To be surrounded by the history and the, the play we were actually doing and it was a real story based on a gentleman who, who had been in that hospital. So it seemed... It was just, it was such a privilege to be able to, to sort of retell history and to explore this, this man and his story in the place where it actually happened. So, yeah, I think, I think there's a lot to be discovered as well. And hopefully in my career, I can, I can discover more. But yeah, across the globe as well. I've, I've, I've just recently come back from Hong Kong, which is, again, is a beautiful, beautiful place. And I'm hoping, well, fingers crossed, I'll be going back there later this year to finish the project that I started, um, A Tale of Two Cities, so I can explore some more of that history because it's a beautiful, beautiful place. So we've talked quite a bit about, obviously, you know, what's inspired you in the past, companies you've been associated with, what personal projects you've had on the go. Are there any other groups or organisations that you would personally recommend to anyone interested in sort of, you know, what you do? There are a lot of companies out there who are creating amazing work. The, some of the projects I've been doing have been from uh, our companies who are based in particular areas, so they're not all based in London, but they all have the same passion, which is about creating change. Um, so I did a production of Blighty One um, with Unexpected Places based in Southampton, which was 
amazing and the work that they do is really good it's about creating change it's about engaging young people with puppets into theatre um, and it was it was an amazing opportunity and the Romeo and Juliet piece that I was doing with Curious Pheasant Theatre was also another one you know taking a classic text and reworking it to bring a message so yeah these are all sort of names to look out for because they're up and coming and and Aftec in Hong Kong the company that I did I'm doing a Tale of Two Cities with again it's about bringing classic English novels onto stage you know part of an amazing season they have over there from page to stage so yeah these are all sort of notable ones you can you can find them online um facebook social media follow them we'll have to check them out actually but the big question is though what projects do we have on the horizon are they under wraps a little bit and if so how can the general public find out more information it's a bit of a difficult time everything's kind of up in the air at the moment but i'm confident that when all this is over new theatre is going to be made and Artists all over the world are going to be inspired to, to do more and create more. But yes, I do have some projects in the pipeline. And um, everything, like I said, everything's kind of up in the air. Nothing is confirmed at the moment. You've got, for instance, any, say, websites or um, spotlight profiles or anything like that where people can get in touch because obviously being quarantined, it's a bit of an awkward time at the moment, isn't it, work-wise? You can find me on social media you can find me on facebook look troy chessman on instagram and troy chessman dot actor um, you can keep up to date with everything that i'm doing as and when it happens and as i find out what's what's happening as things are confirmed and things get back into normal um i'll be releasing that news i'm also on spotlight yeah you can find me again if you type my name troy chessman it will come up unfortunately i can't disclose anything but there are some exciting stuff happening working with some old companies that i've worked with before to develop new work um, in the next year. So keep an eye out for it because it's going to be good. Okay, lovely. Thank you ever so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you, Troy. And um, I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you very much for having me, Tom. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you for everyone who, who has taken the time to listen. Thank you. And I hope, I hope this quarantine um, ends quickly so we can all get back to normal and enjoy our theatre and our history again once more. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.